of Galatians for the last couple months. I, I get bored by the message and she typed it up and sent it to, uh, to Sherry. And she said, you made him still in Galatians? I said, yeah, I'm going to finish up. So this Sunday and uh, is, is there two more? I want to preach two more times out of Galatians. This Sunday and next Sunday. So, I want to mention that. Uh, this morning we want to look at Galatians, the sixth chapter, beginning in verse 11. Well, it's verse 14, but we're going to start reading in verse 11. You see what large letters I write unto you with my own hand, as many as desire to make a, a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For neither there, there the, neither for neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in the flesh. But God forbid that I should glory saved in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. Now, in the text, he makes a contrast between the Galatians who glory in the flesh, who are, are exalted or boost, boast, glory, they who glory in the flesh is humble and commit spirit of God, of whom he prayed that the Lord forbid that he should boast, <coughs> boast, glory saved in the cross, except in the glory saved in the cross of Jesus Christ. The Galatians, for glorifying in the flesh, turned aside <coughs> from the salvation provided by the love and mercy of God in Jesus Christ. They turned to human teachers and thought that, that self-righteousness, self-commendation, they would come before God. And in the third chapter of the book of Galatians, he said, O foolish Galatians, who has been bewitched you. Now I think we were to take a letter letter and appeal to that of the apostle right in the first century and apply it to today. He would say, old foolish modernists or old foolish liberals or old foolish secular, who has bewitched you? That's who what he'd be saying today. You who would Change the scripture of the uh, of the other of the word and other commandments. You would uh, exchange a savior, the Galilean, from another to another savior. You would exchange the song of Solomon uh, and the Lamb to a strange, strong song. Old foolish Galatians. Old foolish modernists, the old foolish liberals, who has warned you of the flesh? Who, why did you do this? But God forbid that I should grow a saved in the cross of Christ. The cross, all of its naked hearts, hideousness, as the Romans would have it, would be exchanged for the suffering and the, uh, of the scribe who had it. But the cross, with all of its love and mercy, forgives and free. God forbid that I should glory in the cross. The cross was a symbol, a sign, an emblem of the Christian faith. The whole course of history turned in, in 308 AD when Constantine was converted in the midst of battle, a battle when he was trying to take the throne of Caesar. At midday, 
He said, I saw a sign in the sky, a cross, and under that cross these words, in the sign, in this sign, come. So the insignia of the Christian faith is not a table of stone contained here. It, it, the insignia of faith is not a sword or a star or a galaxy. The insignia of a Christian faith is not a halo stuck on a man's head. But the insignia of the Christian faith is a true rugged cross. For when we think of it, we think of it as a decoration, an ornament. We think it's think of a cross stuck on top of the steeple of the church house. Or we think of it as a, something you put around your neck and it's, it's made out of precious, precious uh, silver or gold and it's studied with precious stones, diamonds or rubies or whatever. But in the Colosseum, the Colosseum over there in Italy, they have a, a crude cross built that was built in memory of all the Christians who lost their lives, uh, lives during that time. You know, some time ago, there was a movie that we, we, we took a whole group here at the church and went. Uh, and I told you before we go out, read it. Read the story about the crucifixion. The movie was The Passion of Christ. Mel Gibson done it. And uh, it was it was uh, it was done in in Arabic language. And if you didn't know, I didn't know a thing about Arabic language. But I knew enough that when I watched the movie, I knew what was taking place. A lot of people did, and so we need to look at that. That's the same thing as the. The passion play they have over there in Germany, in Germany, in the, in the mountains, they uh, they do it. They talk in German, but they do the passion play. And if you if you and if you know the story, you can follow what is being said. And that's the way it is. The cross, the cruelest instrument, was the cruelest instrument for the execution of the Jews. <coughs> Roman soldier could not be a Roman citizen could not be crucified. It was reserved for felons, insurrection, criminals, murderers, and especially to the Jews. That's what they did. And because Moses had said, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. And when even that day come, the Lord was crucified, the Jews went to to Pontius Pilate and asked that he be that the cross would be taken down because they was having it was the day of the Passover and they they was coming into town into Jerusalem and they didn't want to see they didn't want them three thieves up on the cross or nobody else so they crucified him two ways. One, they crucified him naked. I know you've seen pictures. And they've always, I have to give the author the, the pictures, the artist who kept drawing these pictures, always find clothes. But the clothes that he wore was being cast, gambled for, at his foot of his cross. Jesus was nailed on the cross nude. He was exposed to all the whole world. He was crucified between two malefactors, between insurrectionists or murderers. In his life, he is made known as a friend of publicans and sinners. And here, it all comes together in Isaiah 53. By Isaiah, he was numbered, and it says there in verse 12, he was numbered with the transgression. He was sin itself because he became sin. 
this is not no ordinary crucifixion. There was thousands of Jews who had been crucified under the Roman Emperor. Uh, historians suggest that during the 40 years between pa uh, Pontius Pilate and Titus and Caesar, there was more than 30,000 Jews who were crucified just there. Think of it, 30,000. I mean, it wasn't nothing unusual to see somebody crucified. They crucified everybody. Matter of fact, by Jesus was, by the time he was 18 or 21 years age, they said there's a village that was uh, about five miles away. And uh, it had, they, they were accused of harboring insurrections. They burnt the whole town, the Roman soldiers did, burnt the whole town and executed everyone on the cross. <coughs> Everybody. Men, women, children, all. Killed them all. So it was a common sight in Palestine to see Roman crucifixion. But this is not the same. The Roman centurion under the under the leader the leader of the Caesar said, This man surely, surely this man was the son of God. Well my son in darkness hide and shut his glory in. When the mighty maker died for sin and, and the creature sin. The cross is the sign of the gospel of Christian of the Christian. It is a sign or an emblem of the Christian depravity, of the sin of the human heart. It would be be it could see what humanity is really like. Look at the cross, how cruel, merciful, dark, and sinful it is. Look how cruel it is. Uh, the Lord was born in Bethlehem, a little town called the city of David. God gave his best. The angels sang. The, cap, uh, the uh, shepherds came and worshipped. Uh, the wise men gave gifts. All this was within so many miles of Jerusalem, the great city. 33 years later, they gave back the guilt. They, on the point of a Roman spear. That's what they've done. That's what, so from there you see what the, those who say that, uh, so God, they, a lot of people say that God did it. Curse God as the wife of Job said to her husband, curse God and commit suicide. Job, there are those who say it was our fault. He did it. He found it being a better, better. There are those that said the Jews did it. They said that even the Judas Iscariot did it. He sold him. Uh, they said uh, the Roman soldiers did it. They planted the head. But when it comes to the time, Pontius Pilate washed his hands and said, I am not guilty of this innocent blood of this just man. The Roman soldiers said, we did, we didn't do it. We were under orders, orders from the others. So, from those that was a higher authority than us. So, we didn't do it, we didn't do it, there's a, 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 a picture, not a picture, a story of a man that in his dream, he said, in his dream, he said that he was there when they was marching his Lord through the streets of Jerusalem. And they was beaten him with that cat of nine tails. And uh, he said, he, every time they'd slap him with that wheel, he could see the blood come out. And he said, he starts 
said he drawed back to hit him again, and he said he reached up some way and stopped him. And he said the soldier turned and looked, and he seen his sail. So when, when we see it, we did it. We're the one that crucified Christ. The cross is a sign of the universal human of depravity of mankind. That's what the cross shows. Uh, it's a sign and an emblem of our atonement and our salvation and our hope of glory in Christ. I, I have been to Arlington Cemetery. You see row after row of crosses. I've been to there, that in uh, I wasn't, and I've seen that in the, in, in France, there on Normandy. Thousands of soldiers. Yet somebody put up a cross. Why did they put up a cross? Because the cross is a sign of hope. It is a sign of hope. It fills us with hope. <clears throat> this is God's invitation for you. What more can he do, do to draw you to him? What more? He has given all. He gave his son to be crucified and to die for you. What else could you do? What else could he do? On the piano, someone will come. Sing one first.